use a proper plinth block. And what I mean by that is that in this situation, let's just pretend this is baseboard. We're going to take our cap and use it as baseboard. Just humor me. If we have a base, oh, you got it. Thank you, Ben. This is realistically what it should look like within reason. And I recognize it's kind of hard to see, but you see a substantial shoulder up above there. It should be at least a half inch to an inch. We could even put base cap on this and this would still be tall enough. Again, lay this out ahead of time. That's where those mock-ups come into play. First absolutely. Off to show your customer and also allows you to work out how all these things come together. The other thing we're going to do in this instance, and we already cut it, but I'll, I'll just kind of go through the motions. The other thing we're going to do to actually cut this to length, I'm not going to measure this. I'm going to make the assumption that all our floors are a little bit out of level. And what I'll do is I'll cut all these legs a little bit long, I'll tack them in place, and then I'll bring my, my plinth block onto them and I'll strike a line, usually with a really sharp pencil or better yet, a knife, and then I'll cut that casing to like that. I'm not gonna measure anything. Or if you do proper layout from the get-go with your laser and you set control lines, you can work from control line and then come back and cut your plinth blocks in to fit that. Exactly. But when it's installed, you'll see that there are shadow lines everywhere. There's a shadow line or a shoulder, if you will. There's one here, left, one here, right, one on the face. There's a shadow line or a shoulder between the baseboard and the plinth. That's what carpentry is about. This is what's going to make somebody look, have somebody look at that and it's just going to pop and they're going to say, wow, I get it. The proportions are right, it looks good. And even if the scale's not entirely right, and there's, keep in mind, there's really no hard and fast right or wrong here. This one's a little bit, this plinth block is a little bit too tall, but is it passable? Yeah. It's okay. Some people are like, eh, it'd be nice if it was a little bit shorter, shorter, excuse me, but at least they're not going to look at that and say, wait, what's going on here? What is that? So, okay. So Ben is actually going to set the cap. He's going to make a cap real quick. This is your alternative, and I'm sorry I don't have one. I went to get some of the cheesy store-bought panel cap. You guys have all seen it. It's kind of this profile. Let me see if I can do this correctly. It's typically made for real thin we call it imitation beadboard. You guys have all seen the panel, the beadboard panel wainscoting. Yeah. Anybody ever actually use it? Everyone's kind of, you guys are all carpenter snobs too, I knew it. So at the top, they have this little rabbited cap. It kind of looks like so. And it may have a little OG on it, and it's really dinky. It's because the, the beadboard uh, plywood, they call it, is only three-eighths of an inch thick. That cap only is about maybe three-quarters of an inch or so thick. Yeah. Maybe seven-eighths, something like that. And it's got this little dinky, pro I mean, you can see, this, this is literally from afar. You can't even read it. You can't see what's going on. You need, there's, there are no shadow lines. And no that's all well and good until you run into a bowed wall, too. And now you have this big gap of, for caulking to fill up at the top. Thank you. Thank you. And that's where a substantial cap will save your you-know-what. Something that we were talking about before, and this is a prime example of it, we can't do it here because we're not set up properly for it. Situations like this is where you want to mark your work off of your work. So you bring your work piece over here, you take your pencil, you hold it flat, or if you want to be really OCD, you use your knife and hold it flat against here. And that gives you a dead nuts reference line. Um, so now if you wanted this piece to be a little bit past, you can leave your pencil line on. You can take your pencil line right off and you're guaranteed that this is going to fit. You're sitting over here with your tape measure and you're holding and you're trying to eyeball up and see is this drywall sticking out past, is it in, what's going on over here and get a measurement and then you go and you cut it and you bring it back and it doesn't quite fit. Worst case scenario, it's too short. If you measure your work directly off of it and take your measurements physically, you're never going to have an issue. And that's why it's so important to lay it out correctly ahead of time, because you're starting with a plumb level square reference within reason, or you've compensated, you've cheated a little bit here and there to make it as reasonably accurate as you can, and now you can just take those measurements directly off your work and keep your tape measure in your pouch where it belongs. Okay, so let's actually talk about that cap. So here's what we have going on there. We have two pieces. One has a miter, and you want me to cut this? Yeah, you want, I've got you a mark right yeah, here if you cool. want to square that off right there. We can do that. So you want, where am I, oh, I'm just chopping it? Yep. Butt cut? Okay. The other thing we do that we haven't talked about, and I mean, we can do an entire class on this, is we make cut lists wherever we possibly can. We'll go through and physically measure a room ahead of time. We'll measure for everything we possibly can. We can measure for baseboard. We can measure, measure excuse me, for crown molding. In some cases, chair rail, picture rail, certainly some window and door casings, etc. And we will make a cut list for everything and then what we'll do is we will cut it 
ahead of time, including cutting all the copes. So essentially we walk into a room with an arm full of material and a nail gun and we just go to town and we're installing at that point. You want to just pop this one off at like 12 inches or something? Yeah, like I can do that. Sure. So this stuff, while Greg's cutting that, um, I just order five quarter, six quarter, eight quarter material, whatever, from my lumber supplier and bring it on site and mill it in place. Um, simply, you could take it off the table saw, clean up an edge, and then just kind of soften your edges. <clears throat> just give it a clean detail. Um, it doesn't have to be a fancy profile. Alternatively, you could take and run it through a router table, run a handheld router over it, something just to dress it up. Absolutely. And then we're going to talk about detailing some of these transitions. So what Ben has going on there is he has a butt into that window. In reality, we're going to detail that the same way we did the stool. You can see where this, this looks a little strange. It's, you know, this is, this is why we're doing this. You can kind of see the difference. If we just butt it in there, it's kind of unsupported and it, does, it doesn't look like it was intentional. If we actually take the time to cut a little notch in there and land it on the casing, now it looks intentional. See the difference though between this? Or you will once he installs it. And then when we actually are installing it, the next thing we're going to do before we nail it in, we're going to scribe it to the wall. And this is where, as I mentioned before, this is so important that you have some material you get that actually has some meat to it because you can take your scribes and you can set them. Do you have scribes on you? Not in my pouch. All right. No. You can take your, I had a pair, but that's okay. We will actually take our scribes and we will, I got them. Here's what I do. Here's a tip that I can, I can share with you guys. I bought a really nice pair of scribes a while ago. I haven't really used them too much yet. I'm not sure how I feel about them yet. I mean, it's really, you know, tools are a carpenter. They're like really personal, aren't they? So here's what I do. I take a cheap set of scribes. These are like your, you know, $4 scribes that almost everyone has because there's really very few good scribes in the market in the sub $25, $30 range and no one wants to carry a $30 set of scribes. What I do is I take it and I bend the leg of it. You can see right here I bent this a little bit. The reason I do that is because if I just have this reference against the wall, first of all, I can mark up the wall, which I really don't want to do. We work in a lot of finished houses, and I don't want to be dragging a set of steel scribes little gray along the finished line wall. Across the paint. If I bend these out just a little bit, here's what I can do. I can set them to whatever dimension I need, and then real quick, I can do this. I'm following the, that line on the wall perfectly. This little offset will make all the difference in the world. The other thing we neglected to mention, when I make that cap, I'm going to back bevel it. I'm going to rip the back on about maybe a 10 degree or so bevel. And what I mean by that, let me give you an illustration. If this is the back edge of it, right now this is at 90 degrees. In reality, when I rip this, I'm going to bevel it around maybe 10 to 15 degrees. The reason for that is when I go to scribe this, I've got a lot less material to remove at the top. I mean, this is simple. Like this is the same thing when you come into doing cabinet fillers or something like that. If you take and just back bevel it, now you can sit there instead of having to hog away material, you can use your hand plane and just take a little bit off, work easily like a gentleman and fit everything nicely. Even like a gentleman. Paper. Like a gentleman. We try to work like gentlemen. Well said. Well said. Okay. Dealing with miters and self returns. Go ahead. You want to take it? Uh, so. I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with these. These are just the little miter clips. Uh, these work great. So in this situation, you'd come in, you'd pre-glue it. We'll actually put a biscuit in there. I, I'm, I'm this kind of meticulous about this. I'll go ahead and slot that. For, if it's wide enough, I'll slot it for a biscuit. I want some type of mechanical reinforcer in there if I possibly can. End grain to end grain isn't a very strong connection, even with glue. If you're going to do end grain to end grain with glue and no clamps, forget about it. It's not going to hold up. You must clamp your material. You must clamp the material for the glue to set properly. If you read the label of any carpenter's glue, they require that material that you're clamping together, that glue to be applied under, as we say, under pressure. You have to clamp it. And this is where these are really slick. Uh, a lot of times I'll do that and let that sit up for about a half an hour, come back and pop those clips off, and then I'll run screws through it versus biscuiting it. Can I borrow that? These are really cool. These are These really are, You'll find, once you have them in your toolbox, you'll find yeah. yourself using them a lot, a lot. All sorts of things, making those little returns there. If you're making like mitered long outside corners, you can pin those pieces together, holding back bands in place for you while you work. Okay, so let's back it all up. So for those of you that weren't here before, we're going to revisit this picture. What's wrong with this picture? Have we fixed everything in this picture? 
have we given you guys enough information that you know how to how not to do this now? Yes or no? Seriously? Yes or no? Yes? Who says no? What else do you need to, to your learn? House when you get home? Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. We've talked about proper transitions. You guys are going to remember the shadow lines. People say, remember the Alamo. The hell with the Alamo. That was centuries ago. Remember the shadow lines. No rosettes on the bottom. No rosettes on the bottom. Yeah, excellent. Well, that, that's, that's your takeaway. Right, right on, <laughs> man. We, we knew we could count on you. Use the correct proportions. Use the correct plinth blocks. Remember the shadow lines. Use the proper terminations. And not, use the correct material, for Pete's sake. Yeah, thank you.